Hi guys, the peace and joy of the Lord Jesus Christ may be with you. Remember that he is the Lord of heaven and earth and true God who has come to us in the flesh and to pay the price for our sins so that we may be saved from death and made righteous before the Father in heaven. For there is none righteous before God, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And the price of sin is death that our Lord Jesus Christ has paid for us on the cross of Calvary. If we accept him as our Lord and Savior and believe in his holy work of salvation, we will be saved from eternal damnation and have everlasting life, along with him in heaven. For he was the only one who could take on our sins, for he was the only one without sin. So today I want to show you a very authentic and impressive testimony of a rapture into hell. I recently received it from a precious sister and member of our YouTube family. Her name is Jamila Kame. She wants her testimony to be made public now. And this testimony has it all. We also talk about a near-death experience because Jamila had suffered a fatal accident and was dead for over four hours before she awoke again. Her, here's her impressive testimony of her experience while she was dead. My name is Jamila Kamel. I am Russian by birth, but I live in Germany for three years now. Today I am 27 years old. I studied the law and today I am a lawyer. My mother is also Russian. My father is Jewish. My husband left me when he found out that I became a Christian believer. I pray for him. I don't regret that I became a Christian. I am on the right way. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth and the life. And today I know that this is indeed the truth. I am and remain a Christian. How did I become a Christian? That's a terrible story. At the age of 24, I suffered a serious accident that killed me. That was on April 22, 2016. I was dead for over four hours. At 7.05 p.m. I died as a result of a lintel from the fifth floor of a multi-story house and I awoke again at 11.10 p.m. in the hospital. The doctors already wanted to have my deceased body brought to the mortuary when I suddenly came back to life again. At that time I was just 24 years old. I was a very naive young woman and I made fun of the scriptures of God. I didn't want to hear anything from the Bible. I thought it was a fairy tale, just as it gets taught in school and media. When my parents, who were very religious, went to church, I found it childish and boring. Instead, I was very intent on my appearance. I looked constantly in front of the mirror and found myself beautiful. I loved the shape of my body, but I didn't know how much power Jesus' love has. I remember exactly the day and time when it happened. It was the evening of April 22, 2016, at about 6.55 p.m. when I came home from college. I was very exhausted. The studies had been stressful to me. My husband said, just take a few weeks off and rest. I had found out only recently that I had depression and then the additional worries from the college. This was too much for the moment. I needed fresh air. I went to the windows, opened it and sat down on the windowsill. But I sat too far back, lost balance and fell backwards out of the window of the fifth floor. I crashed on the floor and thought, now I'm dying. When I crashed on the ground, my back and many bones in my body were broken. My skull was also broken and many internal organs were damaged badly. My heart stopped beating. Then I lost consciousness. After a while I came around again, but strangely I only saw darkness. It was pitch black around me. A terrible fear overwhelmed me and I began to tremble. I looked around and saw my body lying in the ambulance. I saw my husband crying and holding my hand. I tried to get back into my body. I wanted to crawl in, but it didn't work. Then suddenly I felt a very cold wind pushing me backwards and I floated backwards. I couldn't do anything about it. The wind was freezing cold. Shivers of fear and frostiness ran down my spine. I knew that from now on I was a soul without body. The wind brought me to an abyss. Thousand voices flashed through my head. Jamila, that's hell. 
The abyss was about 20 meters wide. A horrible stench of sulfur and iron rose up. I stepped closer to the edge and heard horrible screams from numerous people. I wanted to flee, but terrible creatures were around me and they pushed me into the abyss. I couldn't escape. At that moment, I knew that there is a hell. And my parents did not tell fairy tales. I cried bitterly. All around me was pure darkness. It was pitch black. The further I pushed into the abyss, the louder the screams of people I heard. The stench was beastly and also became more intense. Then I saw countless people burning in a lake of fire. It was liquid boiling lava. They screamed and tried to escape from the lava, but they couldn't get out. They had been there for a very long time. They had no flesh left on their bones. Everything had burned away. They were only skeletons anymore. Their bones were burned black, but even without flesh and blood they could suffer, and they cried pitifully. I saw many people that I knew from the earth, and who were there for various reasons. It hurt me to see them suffer. It was a horrible sight. I can barely find words for what I saw there. It was an indescribable horror. It's hard to describe hell. The horror, the torment is unimaginable. When I cried, my tears were immediately dried up by the extreme heat. I noticed how I fell down into the fire. I burned and screamed with unbearable pain. I was also in the lake of fire now, and I could watch my flesh burn from my bones. My bones burned until I turned into ashes, and then suddenly my body was restored. You cannot die in hell, although a person experiences all the horror of a fearsome death. It does not die, but is restored again and again after experiencing the agony. The agony is repeated over and over again. It's an endless suffering. Then I was taken to a place where demons torture people. I saw several of these hideous creatures torturing people in the worst possible way. Then three of these demons appeared next to me. I just wanted to escape, but they grabbed me. I could not get away. I cried and sobbed bitterly. I knew what I had to expect. I saw what they did to other people. They took heavy chains and tied me up. I could barely move. Every touch of these demons caused severe pain. They are worse than any monsters you can imagine. They grinned evilly and looked at me hungrily. They wanted to eat me alive and tear the meat off my bones. Then I was locked up in a kind of prison cell. The cell was tiny. There are countless of such cells in hell. Snakes crawled over me as the demons hit me. A demon took a whip and whipped me with it. Even the whip was made of lava. The blood poured from my wounds and ran over my body. I fell to the ground, but the demons straightened me up again. They spat in my face and continued beating me. Then I cried out to Jesus, Please help me, Lord, have mercy on me. I cannot stand it any more. Get me out of here. Please forgive me. I have mocked the gospel. Slowly the demons disappeared and the snakes crawled down from me. I was very surprised. Then I saw a very small light. It was far away and glimmered in the dark. I saw it from that tiny cell where I was locked up and tortured. The light was getting bigger and brighter. I could touch the light. I went into the light. It lifted me up and suddenly there was no screaming anymore. No bad smell, no fire, no darkness. I only saw light. And suddenly I was on a golden cloud. It was so nice that I wanted to stay there forever. I looked down my body and saw no scars, no injuries, no blood anymore. I just felt like born again. Then I saw the light became a person. It was Jesus Christ, Son of God. He came over to me. I was so happy and grateful that he saved me. It was him, the Almighty. I felt a soft touch. He put his arm on me and then he hugged me. Real tears flowed down my cheek. Jesus wiped them off and then he raised his voice. His voice was sacred and powerful. He said to me, I forgive you. You will return to your life and tell your parents, relatives, friends and other people that there is an afterlife and that there is heaven and hell. 
I prayed. This was the first time I knelt before Jesus. I cried, Amen, bless the Lord. Then I looked at his hands. Right and left, about in the middle of his hands, there were small holes. These were the wounds from the crucifixion. Jesus caught an angel with a sword. The angel held my hand and brought me back to earth. My body lay on a hospital ward. I saw myself lying in a coma. My parents prayed aloud. When my husband entered the room, they stopped praying. I saw them standing around me and crying. I heard the nurse declare to end the coma and have my deceased body brought to the mortuary. The angel said, go, get in your body quickly before it's too late. And don't forget what the Lord has asked you for. So I got back into my body. In the beginning, it felt like a heavy burden that was lying on me. After a short while, I stood up as if awakening from a long sleep. However, it was not a dream what I have experienced. I was really dead. I got up in panic and immediately tapped everywhere on my body to see if I was all right. I could hardly believe it, but I was practically uninjured. I thank Jesus so much. Not only did he give me a second chance and get me back to life, but he also cured me completely of the deadly injuries. My parents wept with joy and shouted, a miracle has happened. All doctors came in and could not believe it. They were speechless. I asked the doctor if my heart was beating. He said, yes, you are really alive. My husband did not believe it. That day, all my relatives and friends came to visit me. I told everybody what I experienced after death, especially the tortures in hell, and that I now believe firmly in the Lord Jesus Christ. For five months after the experience, I was still in the state of shock, traumatized by what I saw and experienced firsthand. But thanks to the Lord that this came to an end as well, and today I am recovered completely. We all went to church together and prayed. I have received the Holy Ghost and made my testimony before the people. I have told what I experienced after death, how horrible hell is, and how Jesus saved me. Unfortunately, my husband has left me. He thought I had been harmed psychologically, but this was not the case. Everything I saw was absolutely real. He just couldn't believe it. But that didn't put me off my path, which I have taken now, namely to serve Jesus until the end of my life. I thank God daily. I never forget his immeasurable mercy, which he has given me. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. May God bless you all, so that we can once all be with him in the kingdom of heaven. For God so loved the world, that he has given his only beloved Son for us men, such that our blame can be atoned for, and our sins can be forgiven, so that everyone who believes in him does not perish, but have everlasting life. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. God bless you.